Hello and welcome to a very special tutorial. It's a little different today. There's not some specific action set that we're gonna be going over, but instead we're gonna be going over a few fundamental ideas that will help you solve your own problems and ideas that will help you to help yourself in the process of designing your games. So the first idea I wanna go over, we'll call the don't press stop idea. The core concept that I wanna start off with here is not pressing the stop button when you've encountered a bug during playtesting. We have a very simple scene here. There is a red cube and a yellow sphere, and we have this FSM that says, wait three seconds, and then it finds the game object called sphere up here. This is called sphere with the tag untagged, doesn't check for its tags, and then it stores it in the variable called sphere, and then it has a game object compare tag action, which checks the tag on the sphere, and if it's tagged as player, then it sends off to this state. And if its tag is not player, then it sends off here. Okay, with the sphere selected, you can see that up here, the tag is indeed set to player. So I'm gonna run this, waits three seconds, and then it shows us that it is not the player. A common thing that I see when I'm helping people out is they'll just come up here, press this play button so it's not running anymore, and then start digging around in their FSMs to see what the problem is. Now, you can find your problems this way, but it's not a very good way of finding your problems. A better way would be to play this, let it run, and then it gives us the unexpected result. And now we could pause the game, or you could even keep it running, but it's better to pause it so you can see the current state of things. And then you could start poking around in the FSM in its current conditions. And that way you could better find clues to explain why it gave you this unexpected result. So for us, I can come over here to this check object tag state. That's the last state it was in. And we could look at some of the values of our variables. So first of all, this find game object, it looks for the object named sphere untagged and it stores it in this sphere variable. And we could see here that the value of our sphere game object is actually nothing. It didn't store anything. So it's probably that this find game object action didn't find anything called sphere. So it's like, well, what's the deal? We have this thing called sphere, right? You find it, it's, that's how it's spelled, capital S and then lowercase p-h-e-r-e, -E. then you come up here and then you realize that there's no game object called sphere. And actually we have a game object called player sphere. And that's when you remember, oh yeah, I made this FSM in the sphere and the first thing that it does is it sets the name of that sphere to player sphere instead. Now, this problem, well, you could solve if the game wasn't running, was actually just more apparent when the game was running because this is a value that changes in real time. We were able to see this find game object not functioning. So yeah, I could come here and instead say player sphere and then hit play, waits three seconds and then we get the expected result. Okay, so I highly encourage you to either pause your game or at the very least, just don't stop it and then come over into your FSMs and run through your states to see where exactly things might begin to go wrong. And that's the first step in finding clues to debug your problem. The next thing that I wanna go over is going to be the idea of turning things on and off. Some common questions that you see beginner game developers asking are things like, how do you turn a light on and off? Or how do you open and close a pause menu? Questions like this have something in common. Their solution is relatively clear and obvious. It's right in front of you if you've already learned some of the fundamentals of Unity and Playmaker. Nonetheless, people who have already gone through the fundamentals still ask questions like how to open and close a menu or how to turn a light on and off. And that brings me to the idea of manually turning things on and off in Unity. An example of this could be the pause menu. Now over here, I have this canvas game object and you'll see that it's deactivated. I have this checkbox up here. Now, if I activate it, we can now see this panel and button. If I deactivate it and activate it, deactivate it and activate it. Now, that's essentially opening and closing a menu. And playing with features within the inspector and other places around the Unity interface is a great way for you to get familiar with how to begin programming those things. Because now, if you saw that, well, I can turn off this button and panel by deactivating it or activating the game object, that gives you a clue on how you might begin to program it. So in this case of the menu, deactivating and activating the canvas could be something like adding an FSM to another game object 
and then throwing in the activate game object action and then specifying that game object as the canvas. I can have this running every frame and we'll see now that when I play this, I could deselect this activate check mark and it'll go away. And I could select it again. And that's like turning on and off or opening and closing a menu. Similarly, you'll see that if I deactivate this canvas and I activate this point light, I have this light right here in the scene. It's the same idea. I could deactivate it and activate it. So in this turn on and off, I'll just change this point light instead. And now when I change this activate value, my light turns on and off. Okay, so this is applicable to so many other things. Now it's just a matter of your imagination. And that brings us to the next idea that I wanna go over, which is risk-free modifying at runtime. It's actually something that I just did right now in this very tutorial, and something that happens in plenty of other tutorials. I'm sure you've done it yourself, but now I really wanna stress the value of this. So what is risk-free modifying at runtime? Well, I have a little sample scene here as well. I'm just gonna turn off these ones really quick. And now we can see that I just have this one single cube in the scene. And it has this tween scale action and this rotate action. So if I press play, you'll see that it grows and it shrinks and it does that over and over again, all the while it is rotating. So when I say risk-free modifying at runtime, what I mean is that if I come over to this tween scale, so you'll see that right now it takes three seconds for it to grow between its current scale and the add to scale value. So I'll change this three second value to something like 10. So now you can see that it takes the full 10 seconds and I could just as easily change it to 0.5 so it's half a second so it goes much quicker and I'm doing all of this at runtime and what's cool about this is that I could tweak things really to how I like it and I won't have to worry about these values being saved if it's something I don't like because now if I hit stop my value returned to its original value before I started playing the game. See it's set back to 3. Okay so I could play this game change this to 0.5, come down here to the rotate action and say we're gonna go at 50 instead and now it's spinning faster. I mean, let's even let's crank it up, 150, spinning super fast. And that's not just for changing values of things. What I could do is I can add another state to the FSM while the game is running. And then in this state, I can have a random material and we'll say that it'll have this blue, red, and yellow. And then it'll have a finish transition. So after it does that, it sends back here. Now I'm gonna add a finish transition to this and send to here. Now these things run every frame, so it's never gonna fire off this finish transition. But what I could do is hold Alt and click on the finish transition. And I could send back and forth between these states. So now my cube is red and I could do that again. turn blue, turns red, turns yellow. So I've added a whole separate state to my FSM and now it's doing something very different. But the moment I hit this play button again, all that disappears and it just goes back to what it was beforehand. So that's what I mean by risk-free modifying. You can feel free to explore and try different things out while the game is running. You don't have to worry about botching your systems and going through the hassle of reverting everything back to normal, because sometimes you can't just control or command Z your way back to a previous version. It does have its drawbacks because of course, you know, you, if you really nail something and then forget what you did, that kind of stinks. But you can also, in the middle of runtime, copy your values and then paste them back into the system. So it is encouraged to mess around with things at runtime, but also to do it incrementally in small portions so you can manage what you're doing. Now, something that's kind of a combination of two ideas that we went over, first, this risk-free modifying at runtime, but also turning things on and off is by seeing how FSMs run by turning them on and off. So we have this FSM, which makes the thing rotate and it grows it and shrinks it. So if I hit play, okay, it's running as expected. But I also have this other FSM. You can see this color changer FSM. And currently it is not enabled. This checkbox is not checked. So that means it's not running. If I hit edit, we can hop in here and you can see even down here, it says disabled in big letters. You can select the state and what it has on it is a tween color action. So it would make it change from this reddish color to this greenish color. And it'll do that over a course of three seconds. But since the FSM is not enabled, it's not doing anything. So the same way you could test objects by 
deactivating and then activating them again. You can do the same thing with individual components like this color changer FSM. Right now it's disabled, but now if I enable it, we could begin to see how it interacts with the other FSMs. Okay, and you could disable it. And now this cube will just kind of stay this middle shade of red. And if I disable it during its greenish color, it'll stay green. And of course, our green cube, well, it's green now. If I stop the game, everything goes back to gray and the color changer FSM is of course disabled again. So hopefully these ideas can encourage you to do more testing and explore more freely on your own terms. There's so many really awesome, fun things to poke around in Unity and Playmaker and really at such little cost. The one precaution sort of caveat that I do want to mention is that when you are modifying things during runtime, they will revert unless you are modifying things in your asset folder. So you can modify any of the things that are here in your hierarchy during runtime, but coming down here into a prefabs folder, if I was running this game, and then I decided to modify this cube or sphere prefab, as opposed to the cube that's in the scene, these prefabs, if I edited during runtime, would maintain the edits that I make to them. If I open up the sphere and I change this Y value down and I go back to my scene and now if I stop playing, if I put that sphere in my scene, it maintains the change that I made to it. So this goes for everything else in your assets folder. I'm gonna change this back and get rid of this Otherwise, feel free to totally mess about because this should be a sandbox for you. It should be a safe place to play. Now, just in case you are stressed out about adding things or changing things in your game, whether or not it's during runtime, a really helpful little technique that I think a lot of people could benefit from is by making a dedicated folder to testing things out. So for example, I can come here to this scenes folder and I could right click, create new folder. I'm gonna go and call this testing new feature. And I'll hop into this folder and I'll just create a new scene, new feature. And then I'll make sure I save the scene that I'm currently on and open up the new one. And now in here, you could just test the new feature itself and not have to worry about messing with any of the other things that you are currently working on. Sometimes it may involve testing a new feature against or with the current systems, in which case you could put some of those systems in the new scene. The way you could do that is very easy. So for me, I'm in this testing stuff out folder. The don't press stop video that we're on right now is in this scene. I can drag and drop this scene into my new feature scene. And so there are two scenes here running simultaneously. And what I could do is say, okay, well, I want this risk-free modifying at runtime stuff, which is just this cube or this don't press stop, which is the cube and the sphere. And I'm like, you know what? Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this and I'll put that in my new feature thing. And then I could right click on don't press stop scene and remove scene. And then it asks me, do you want to save the changes? And I say, no, I do not. And now I have the cube and sphere from that other scene. So if I wanted to test out something new with these systems, I could do it in this safe space and not have to worry about messing with any of the other stuff from the scene that they came from. So really, go out there, don't be afraid to mess stuff up. And you know what? It's gonna happen. You're gonna make mistakes. But the worst possible thing you could do is let that fear stop you from trying new things and progressing in your development. Be sure to check out our other videos to learn all the various features of Playmaker. Links to more learning resources are in the description.